What's up, guys? JP coming at you, bringing you the uh, movement today, and I am sitting here at this glorious table with glorious. Wilson. What's up? Cam. Hello. And producer extraordinaire. Oh. What's up, guys? That was my attempt. It didn't work. <laughs> uh, to drag out. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yes. So oh, yeah. oh, there, there it is. See, see, oh, that's all oh. we needed right there. <laughs> I was thinking that. What same was that thing. off of? What movie? It was, was a it? candy bar Can- commercial. Oh, oh was, was it a candy really? bar? Yeah. I thought that was in a movie. It, it wasn't. Oh, no, well, it was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Ferris, Ferris Bueller. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great movie. That was in a lot of different. All movies, the millennials also. were like, "What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> Who's Day Off? That's the movie where they drove the car through the glass window. Exactly right. That Ferrari. Yeah, they tried to take the miles off of it. That's stupid. Oh, that's right. Yeah, driving it in reverse. Yeah, I'm gonna drive it reverse, get the miles off of it. Yeah. I don't know works. who you voted for. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> you wear a mask in your car by right. yourself, don't you? <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. Or anywhere else. <laughs> well, yeah. um, All right. Pray continue. So today we're going to talk about discipline a little bit. I want to get some of y'all's mindset on, on how you maintain discipline, how you develop discipline, uh, and what the importance of discipline is. Because uh, I know it, it was cool. I just I just saw a quote, and Dina actually, Dina actually called it out when somebody said it. And she was like, you know, I think um, – Josh and the the shepherds uh, talked about that in a in a previous podcast, but uh, but it was you know that you, you either have the pain of discipline or the pain of regret, right? Yep. So um, I'm going to start off real quick. I want to get you guys involved early on. What does that mean to you when I say something like that? When you say the pain of discipline or the pain of regret, you either you either have either or. Yeah, what, Th- there is no in between. It's either or. It's you're going to pay the piper. Like so, you can either choose to discipline yourself or you're going to be disciplined by life or by whatever else. I mean, it, 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 it is. Uh, so I'll give you a good example. Uh, my buddy, Phil neighbor of ours uh, last night, I was, he's always teaching his kids stuff, which I really respect and I appreciate, but we had the fire going and he was teaching his son that uh, the wood was burning. And then we put some cardboard we threw some cardboard on there and it was burning down. And he said that cardboard is not disappearing. It's just changing forms. He's like, you can't get rid of mass. It just changes what form it's in. So it's changing from a solid to a gas. So it's that reminds me of kind of like what you're what or, or maybe helps me understand or helps somebody else understand. Like it's still there. Like so you can either choose to say, I on my terms, I'm gonna go out and go through the hard or go through the suck, or I'm gonna sit around and just like think it's not gonna happen and get smacked with the suck right in the face. Yep. You know? And That's if, what it means to me. If you haven't had a chance um to go listen to Les Brown uh, Les Brown's an amazing motivational speaker and stuff, and he talks about that. He said, "If you're if if you do what is easy, your life will be hard. Yep. If you do what is hard, your life will be easy." 100%. So just I'll, I'll leave you with that. But so Wilson, what, what do you think? Well, I mean, you're going to have two types of pains. I mean, you're going to have a pain of regret, which everybody hates. I mean, you sitting on your deathbed and go, "Man, I wish I would have just gave it more effort in life," or you go through the pain of you know getting better at whatever it is. At the moment, you know, uh, facing your fears, you know, conquering whatever goal that you're looking to conquer and, and setting out to, to have the discipline to actually see it through, you know, and it's not easy. It isn't easy. It's not meant to be easy. Success is not easy. It's not going to happen like what he was saying, you know, overnight. It's not going to happen without any kind of, you know, effort. You know, you're going to have to put effort in. And, and if you don't, if you're not willing to put that effort in, then you're not going to achieve whatever it is that you set out for. I think most people who don't have – um or the people who do have regrets is that they just never have anything in mind that they want to achieve. Yeah, you don't want to have any regrets. Um, regrets. No, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Not even one little letter. <laughs> not even one letter of it. No. Uh, so, so that's and that's and that's good. I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I think anybody that that is success minded uh, that has a a plan for their life and and, and goals in life, like detailed goals, um, you know, that's that's a pretty straightforward quote there. Um, I, I know, I know for me, one of the things I carry around with me all the time and I remind myself is if you were more disciplined when you were in high school, mm-hmm. um, you know, what could you have done in football? What could you have done as a, as a wrestler? Uh, you know, what, what, what could you have accomplished to this point in your life if you would have been more disciplined? So every time I wake up in the morning and my alarm clock's going off and I go to hit that snooze button, I go, what if you'd have done more? Yeah you know, kind of thing. And I, I think, I think it's one of those things where your, your discipline has to derive from something that is, that is personal. Uh, cause if it doesn't, and if it doesn't, you know, get you somewhat emotional, then, then the, the discipline is, is going to be, I don't know, I guess kind of lackluster. 
but as far as as far as let's go let's go day to day because people that are listening to this uh, their their biggest discipline issues I would I would assume their largest percentage of of issues with discipline have to do with day to day things. So what are what are some of the what are some of the barriers that you guys have to overcome from a discipline standpoint uh, to say you know like it, it's easy not to do it what you need to do or whatever but you know just some of the some of the practical things that you just go you know what not today devil yep or satan not today satan well that and that, i think one of the biggest barriers is just the ease itself it's it's so for me it's so much easier to say nah or i'll put it off or i'll procrastinate than it is to actually do it you know and i've talked about this in early episodes um last year where we were like that i switched that from being what it was to being a trigger you know, some, sometimes you have to create triggers to make yourself act. Well, that that whole mindset of I can that procrastination mentality has become my trigger. So, like now, what I've programmed myself over time is when I want to procrastinate, that kicks in another brain cell or something. It's like, no, I need to do it right now because I'm about to procrastinate. You know, whether it be reading or you know whatever, whatever it may be, it's like I want to go act on it now because I'm about to not act on it at all. Right. And you can say, well, I'm going to do it later, but later is typically turns out to tomorrow. And then the more times you put it off, the easier it is to put it off. It's just like anything so else, true. you know, it's just, and, and this may be an extreme example, but it's just like sin. You know, like if you, if you have sin in your life, the more times that you um, visit that arena of your life or you go to that place, the easier it is to do it again the next time, you know? And it's the same thing goes for if you're trying to be proactive about how you want to live your life, it's going to be harder, but the more you do it, you know, the more that you associate the right people, the more you read consistently, the more you listen to great stuff, then it becomes easier to do the next day. It becomes habitual. So I guess to answer your question, the ease of it itself of to say like the whole slight edge thing, it's easy, easy to do, easy not to do. To me, it's easier not to do. I think to most people, it's probably easier not to do. So what about something like personally for you, what is something that you struggle with as far as from, and, and you are a very regimented, disciplined <laughs> guy. So to I, a fault sometimes, yeah, yes. my wife would tell you. Um, so, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, I, I, honestly, and maybe surprising to, to even y'all sitting here is like, honestly, all of it. Um, you know, reading is something that I have to, I have to trigger myself and I have to make myself do a lot of times. Um, probably more recently is, is listening. And that's only because I used to have a library of things that were more kind of, uh, there was almost a program behind it where it was like, you know, you could kind of, I'm very like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. And, and I could follow that. Now it's more like, I just need to find something that's good and, and, and go down that trail, and listen. Um, you know, and even from a physical standpoint, like now I've actually gotten better at this where it's, if I go more than a day or two, like, especially now that I've gotten in, which I never in a million years thought I would have gotten into running, but now I'm getting to a point where I love it. Mm. I shouldn't say I love it, but I'm really, I really like it a lot. But like the other day I, I hadn't worked out in a couple of days and I was getting antsy. And so I got home and it was like about a 30 minute window before it was going to be dark. And I, and I told Tanya, I was like, Hey, I'm going to go run. And I'll be right back. And because we've got a trail outside our neighborhood or whatever. And I know I can do three miles in about 25 to 27 minutes. So I went and hit three miles, which I like even saying it. I'm like, so now some people are listening going, that's not that far. But I never thought I'd be able to just pop out and do three miles, come home, whatever. But it becomes one of those things where it's like once it's become habitual, it's like you're you're looking for it, you know, because when I got done, then I, I'm better. Like now we're cooking dinner, we're enjoying the family or whatever, and I'm better, but I needed it. I needed 25 to 30 minutes of, of working on that. But yeah, all, honestly, all of it is stuff that I have to, there's not one single thing where I'm just like, oh, that just happens. I, I'm, I'm glad that you Same. said that too. You said when, when you said habits, I'm glad you said that. Cause that was, that was kind of the, the direction that I was had, is, heading is, you know, habits are the compound interest of self-improvement. Right. Yeah. Uh, so habits don't don't are not created without discipline you have to have discipline to create habits um so i you know that's and that that's that was a great segue into that so so what about you wilson i mean what's your what's your barriers what what, what do you struggle with all of it, <laughs> all of it. All of it. i think Honestly. i'm glad we're talking about this because i think there's like i know i've been guilty of it I and i we've of. talked about this in past episodes too and i'm, I'm cutting you off but 
it's so important for people to realize, like, it's not just like, oh, well, it's so easy for Josh. Yeah. No, it's not. No, yeah. no it's not. It's so easy for Wilson. Just listen to him. He just sounds happy all the time. He is happy all the time, but he still struggles with discipline. Absolutely. I, I think that's always been a struggle um, just in general. I don't, I don't think it uh, comes natural to anybody to say, yeah, I'm just going to do this. Um, and, it, and it boils down to what you really want to accomplish. You know, so physical fitness is not something that I'm inspired to do. Like where you, on the other hand, it's like that is like your goal because you want to compete and, and that you have bigger goals in that regard. Now, I don't want to not not do anything um, because whenever I do, I just feel like crap, you know, and, and you see yourself in the mirror and you're like, yep, it's catching up because your decisions are coming back and you need to go run or you need to go do something. Um, mine right now, life is just full blast, which is awesome. I'm not complaining. I love it. Uh, some things, uh, whenever you do go full blast, you have the priorities that you have in place. My priorities is God, country, family, business, uh, business is on the backside, but, uh, being in traditional business, you don't really have a backside. You, you are the maker of making it happen. You have Let's to be honest. You have a backside. Well, <laughs> yeah. yes. Big, big yeah. booty. Big booty. <laughs> natural. Oh, natural. Oh, natural. <laughs> I didn't have to pay for this one. Well, let's oh, hope he didn't get butt man. implants as a man. That would be oh, pretty awkward. God. I can't believe people did. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's for our listeners in San Francisco. So one thing that, <laughs> right. No, this is, un, no, mm but anyway, uh, one thing that uh, I don't and I have never swayed on is my my belief uh, in Christian faith is very, very important to me, number one. And uh, as long as that is right and my prayer life is right, I'm pretty much flexible on everything else, and that's the problem. You know, that's the problem that it's not um, – and I was talking about just, just – behind the scenes, not listening to the podcast or you're speaking in the podcast. But for me personally, it's like when you do reading so much and how simple my life really is, I, I don't overthink things. It's just, it's, it's very simple. Success is simple. Everything else is success, uh, simple. You read multiple success books. It's almost the same. And it's like, I got to change it up. I got to find something. And that's the struggle is like, okay, what can I get drawn into? What can I read that I don't want to put down? What can I find that I'm just that hunger, that desire? And reading so many book, good books, you go back to another book that's not as good. And you're like, well, I already know this. And that's my problem now. I'm at the point to where it's like, I'm, I'm really reading some good stuff. But then at the same time, it's like, I've already, I already know this. So that's kind of where I'm at. I don't know where I need to go with that. I need to find something that I can really, really dive into. Reading the Bible uh, is very important to me. Um, and, I, and honestly, in my life right this moment, uh, trying to find a, a perfect every single day, this is mm -hmm. when we're going to do it, is, is, not, is not there for me yet. Um, now I can go and put it in at the back end, front end. I don't know. I, that's, that's where I'm that's why I liked it. That's why I asked you. Say, hey, can you talk about this? Well, no, well, that's, let's, let's, let's. And I think too, like that's a that's a, and you're probably about to say this, JP, but I think that's a, a crucial uh, point that you're making there is that the discipline of doing it is might depend on the discipline of scheduling it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I and I can say for myself, like it's one thing to say these are the things I'm going to do today. It's another thing to say I'm going to do them at this time. Right. And that really, when you can start holding yourself accountable to those things, because I don't know about y'all, but when I put something in my calendar, it eats me up if I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Or if I, or maybe it's not even, account, I, no, number one, I would say, <clears throat> if you're not keeping a calendar for your life, you are wasting so much time. You have no idea. You need to have a calendar for everything. Um, I'm not saying you got to get bogged down with it, but you need to keep calendar. Um, but even if it's just a list, like a to-do list, like at least have it on there, like read, listen, pray, Bible, whatever, whatever your things are, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. But like, it's just hard to go to bed at night and not have them scratched off. Right. It really is. And and I, I believe that will, if you're any kind of man, I believe it's going to push you enough to where you go like, I'm not going to bed again without reading. Yep. Because every time I look at that list and it's not checked off, it, it eats at me. Yep. Right. Or if I look at my calendar and it's not checked off. You know, like we're t we did some calendar stuff. I, you said, I'm going to set a reminder in my calendar to do this. I set one too. Yep. Because I want, and it wasn't like, it was just because I was taking personal responsibility of it too, because it's something we were handing off and I just want to make sure it got done. Mm -hmm. And, but it had it not been that, then that that's a discipline. That's a discipline move of putting, setting, taking the time to set a reminder and say, this is something important. 
Let's make sure it gets done. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, double whammyed it. It's like, so what? Who cares? That's okay. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, because it, it is uh, something that's important to us, what we've just set out to do, and, and it, it needs to be done. And I noticed that I dropped the ball on it because I was like, I didn't, I didn't clarify that I actually did this, so <laughs> that concerns me. And uh, and I, and I did. I owned up to to that. And I think uh, that's another thing too. You got to own up to you know your mistakes. And uh, yeah, stop and being not, a tough guy. Just freaking. No. We it all is screw what it up, is, man. We oh all screw yeah. Up. Well, that's that's important. So uh, one of the things that you said was <clears throat> about simplicity. Simplicity in your life. The books that you read. Like you can go through and read a lot of books, and there's a lot of different skill sets that you can learn from the books. But success in general. Uh, is is pretty consistent across the board. You look at anybody that's been really successful, It's it there, there's a consistency across that. And everybody's looking for this secret formula. But the fact of the matter is, what most people are missing is discipline. Mm-hmm. That's what most people are missing. Um, so if you can figure out the discipline aspect of your life, success is right around the corner. I mean, yeah. and that's and that's real life. So uh, one of the things that like I think, we and we've talked about this several times before, Cameron, you hit on it. When, be specific and back yourself into a corner if you need to, man. Like, yep. don't say, I'm going to work out. <laughs> well, that's great. Sure you are. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. When are we going to work out? Next year? Wait, uh, tomorrow? Like, when are we? I'm not, I'm not that's a conversation I'm not you asked. Like, hey, when am I seeing you? Yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not necessarily busting your chops about it. But, so, and I promise you, you take two guys and you tell one, you say, hey, look, I want you to tell yourself that you're going to work out. Good affirmations. Tell yourself you're going to work out. This guy over here, you say, I want you to write down where and when you were going to work out and turn it into me. Yep. Who's going to work out? It's a no-brainer. Dude, the guy that wrote it down and said when he was going to do it, backed himself into a corner, he'll be at the gym at that time. Mm-hmm. If he's any any kind of integrity whatsoever. Um, so you mentioned another thing that I thought was really, really important from a discipline aspect is awareness. So I'm going to break this down into four different aspects, right? So in order to develop, um, you know, discipline, habits, and success in life, uh, there, there has to be some sort of awareness, a desire, action taken, and reward that, for that action, right, for, for whatever it is you do. And sometimes uh, we spoke about this in a previous episode that we were just talking about with the holidays and stuff like that. Sometimes we get so busy and we're so productive and so, so set on being productive as a male that we don't reward ourselves. And I think sometimes you can get in trouble for that because you start to build a dull life and you mm-hmm. stop having that reward center in your in your sure. life being being, um, you know, put. It, uh, um, I mean, rewarded. I guess. Yeah, ultimately, like, what am I what am I working for? Right. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. like if you know that you've been busting your ass and you've been super disciplined, but you're not allowing yourself to enjoy the results of that. Like, I'm all about delayed gratification. You guys know that, but I'm also about like you you need to say damn, I've been doing good. And like, yeah. I need to get a win. Yeah. You know? And it's cyclical too, right? Mm-hmm. So it's cyclical, just circular, it's right? So, so it just keeps going in a circle, right? So you have awareness. Once you're aware, you develop a desire for what you want to do. And then you take action on that desire. You create a plan, take action on that desire. It's things that you're doing, disciplines involved in that and stuff. And then there's a reward center. When you reward for it, the awareness of where you're at now is is more aware. Heightened. So now I'm, yeah, yeah I'm, now, I'm, now I'm, I'm making progress. I'm doing whatever. The desire gets bigger, blah, blah, blah. But it also goes counterclockwise, mm-hmm. right? So it'll go the opposite direction. So if you don't reward yourself, the action starts to slow down because you start to go, what am I working for? You know, and then when the action slows down, the desire starts to go away. When the desire mm-hmm. goes away, the awareness goes away because then you go, F- I don't care. I don't care yep. anymore. I don't, yep. I, don't, I don't fucking care. Um, so uh, you got to create clarity to develop discipline. In, in my mind, you, you said clarity the other day when we were on the, um, the, the tech stream and I thought that it was really applicable because I was, I was actually doing notes while I was building this up. Uh, but you, you can't, you can't change something that you're not aware of. So that's, that's step one of being disciplined. Uh, but I also think that you have to be hungry. So if, if you're listening right now and you're not hungry, you have no desire to be better in life, uh, or you're just, just comfortable with where you're, you're at, then maybe you should find something that, that lights a fire in your belly. I'm talking to the guys that have a fire in their belly right now. That's, those are the guys that I want to talk to. I want to talk to the guys that want to do something better uh, with their lives because these are going to be applicable to that. If you don't have a fire in your belly, um, hey, we're you not talking to you. Go to Taco Bell. Uh, yeah, we're not, we're not talking to you, and then you'll have fire. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but we're not necessarily talking to you right now um, because – I think one of the things from a discipline standpoint is like discipline to me means you're going to do things that you don't necessarily want to do at that time Um, because, you know, the end goal uh, is in sight. So you think of a lion that's hungry will will go out and run and do ridiculous things to get food. I mean, even a human being, if you're hungry, 
Oh, You'll yeah. eat some stuff that you probably would not have ever. Ever watched Naked and Afraid? Right. <laughs> right, like that kind. Of, yeah, that's a, so. That's a great example. You know, if you're if you're not hungry, um, then then you know maybe maybe we shouldn't even be talking about this. Uh, but I, I wanted to get some of y'all's perspective on that because one of the things that I believe that we're missing in society today is discipline in our youth. So discipline from, and I'm not just talking about the belt or you know spare the rod, spoil the child kind of thing, but discipline from a standpoint of shit's not going to be given to you. Yeah. You have to earn it. Like I want to wear a shirt around constantly. that just says hashtag earned mm-hmm. like but, <clears throat> mean shameless these, plug. Mean pecs. Right. Yeah. Shameless plug. This is the, yeah, probably, probably like uh, some, a tight some, shirt. A shmedia. Yeah. Some <laughs> swag that'll be coming out soon, but hashtag earned Cause that's one of the things you should be most proud about in your yeah. life. Um, and without it discipline, you don't, you don't earn shit. Uh, but a lot of people we've got into this culture of, um, I don't know, just like you owe me something, yeah, you know, and it, it makes me sick. So yep. I, I feel it, entitlements. Yeah. Uh, but what I feel like is I feel like we as a country, I think we should have a a two year mandatory service in the military for everybody. Now, that's my opinion. I think that when you get out of college, so now we we provide uh, a lot of a lot of states are providing community college for free, two years community college for free. One of the things that disgusts me about shit for that's free, free yes. well, so here free. and, and well, I, I love the fact you gotta that you're, be over twenty five or something like that. Too. Well, I love the fact they're giving people the opportunity to get a high education. I, I'm I'm all I'm all about that. But when you make shit free, there's no value to it. Mm. There's very little to no value to it whatsoever. Yeah. Um, that's why I think that like, I I love the way that Israel does that kind of stuff. Like they, they, they mandate that everybody that, that graduates has to go to two years of service or has to serve two years of service. What that does is it, it starts to, it starts to show you that, you know, for one, we're a team for two, you're going to work your face off and there's a certain level of discipline and respect to authority that you're going to have to have. We don't have that here today. There's, there's so many people out there that think they can get away with shit. That and we've talked about this before. You know, you live with that online culture where people can talk shit and not get punched in the face. Mm. Um, you know, and that, and that's one thing that drives me nuts. So that's one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about while we were sitting here. Just and it doesn't have to be a long drawn out conversation, but I believe that we should have a two year mandate where people have to serve in the military, whether it's um, reserves and you go officer route. Like I want to go to college. I want I want to go get a bachelor's degree. I spend two years, and it will be very similar to an officer route when you go into the military after high school, I want to become an officer kind of thing. So you spend two years minimum Mm -hmm. and then you can do college stuff or you can do enlisted, which is two years and you go skills or whatever it may be. We, we, we solve two problems. Uh, we don't have all these jackasses running around that don't feel like they have to respect authority or the flag uh, or the flag or whatever it may be. Um, and we fix the skill gap that we have right now mm-hmm. in our society with people that don't understand, you know, anything feel like th- things need to be given to them. So what, what, are, what are y'all's thoughts on that? You can disagree with that. I mean, I don't, I don't, well, if you're saying that it, instead of giving it generally free and without any recourse or any skin in the game, I think that's a great idea of, hey, if you want to go to college for free and you meet these criteria, you have to go serve for two years in any of these government fields, um, whether it be military or whether it be some other government service of some sort. Great, whatever. But I, I kind of don't like that, too, because government is given out to, like, we pay them. So it's kind of like you're adding more fuel to the fire. So, But I would say military route would be perfect um, because I do agree with that. If you don't have any skin in the game, you're not going to take it Seriously, now some folks who has nothing and have had nothing have the opportunity to go to college. I think those would benefit from this currently because they would take it, you know, as like, hey, somebody's helping me up. Yeah. Because that's what we're supposed to do. So there is a little bit of, you know, uh, fine line there. But I, I do I think that if somebody just gives something for free, they don't value it and then they're just going to treat it like crap. Mm. I do. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not opposed to the, your, concept there of two years of service I, I i think there's a lot of positive that could come from that for sure and mm-hmm. i think certainly there's you know the argument would be there's a lot of people that's just not what they're made to do i, I agree it's why it's only two years right. you know um it's not necessarily like you we're planning on you being a colonel it's just that there's two years of understanding a mentality of appreciation for your country and and appreciation for authority and, and when i say authority i don't mean somebody you know telling you what to do i mean you being able to learn from somebody that knows more than you you know um 
there's a, a different discipline that you create and, you know, the way you're creating habits. And, and for a lot of people, unfortunately, in our society, it may be the first time that they have anybody guiding them, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and directing them, you know, and um, some people would be butthurt about it, but uh, I don't, I don't know that it'd be bad, honestly. And if I look back, you know, one of the things that I have people ask me all the time, like it's crazy how many times I have people ask me, "Are you military? Are you military?" And dude, it, it, it to the point of like, listen, for any military friends or veterans or anything that are listening to this, I not at all confused about the fact that I have no idea what you've been through, right? Not at all. I do believe that you can develop a, a mentality that uh, is similar to what you can develop in the military if you choose to. But I am not confused with the fact that you have been through things and seen things and done things, and it's a whole different world. So there's nobody at this table has served, and so we're not we're not stepping into those shoes. We respected them, like, infinitely. Absolutely. Um, but one of my biggest regrets is when yeah. I was, of, you know, that 18, 19, 20-year-old time frame, I was in a place where I wasn't even thinking. That wasn't even on the radar for me. Now that I'm – past that time in my life i'm like man i really wish i'd have done that i'm in the i really do Mm -hmm. because as much as i appreciate our country the only reason i do is because i had some men step into my life and show me why i should and had i served i would have appreciated i'd I'd appreciate it even more than i do right now you know and and i think it and and i think you know if you look back at societies or cultures over you know the history of the world the ones that were the ones i wanted to be a part of always had something like that in place you know you think about sparta you think about those different places it's like you know that was just part of the game if you're if you're a dude and listen it could be girls too but if you're a dude like part of the game is you're gonna you're gonna be a protector of our country first yep and you're gonna understand why we are what we are and you're gonna be a warrior and then you can do your thing right that's so that's that's the old adage that you know why do you why do you always train to fight but preach peace it's because you know it's it's better to be a gardener, yeah, that in in a garden that knows how to fight than to be a gardener in a war that doesn't know how to fight. You yeah, know, like yeah. I, I butchered the shit out of that, but that's that's basically <laughs> know, the like, concept of it. It's better to be a, a garden, no, a warrior, it's better in a garden. to be a gardener, a warrior in a garden than a gardener, gardener in a war. war. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I butchered the shit out of it, but but no, that's and that's and that's the big that's the big thing. It's one of the biggest regrets that I have. Um, <laughs> I thought it was rag rats. <laughs> well, whatever, rag rats, <laughs> regrets. And and not not in a not in a in a bad sense, but I I was unlike unlike yourself, I was actually looking at it because yeah. I my s- freshman year is when nine eleven happened. Mm. Um, so my junior year, I was having serious discussions with the Marines and stuff, and I wanted to be I, I wanted to be special forces. I wanted to be you know badass from that aspect. But everybody's different. So what I'm thinking about is like not not necessarily like you don't have to be special forces. You don't even really have to be infantry. Like you could go into the military and do basic training kind of stuff for two years. You go in, you do basic training, you go through the whole steps. They teach you certain levels of higher, you know, education, whether it's skilled trades or it's, you know, whatever it may be. But the biggest part about it is, and everybody that I've talked to that was in the military, I mean, and and like you said, I wasn't there. I didn't live it. But a lot of them say that one of the best things in the world for them was the discipline that they gained from it because yeah. it, it helps you in the long run. That's why I get those com- comments all the time, too. Like, you military, you know, or whatever. It's the biggest compliment I can get, to oh, be honest 100%, with you. 100%. Because yeah. there's something about your demeanor, and I would imagine it's the fact that you stand upright, you make you make eye yep. contact, you say, yes, sir, you say, yes, ma'am, you know, whatever it is, yep. that, that triggers people to assume that. Well, it's, it's, you're a unicorn nowadays, unfortunately. Yep. People go, well, I don't see that every day. Right. And that's a shame. Right. Because it should, like, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, eye contact, standing upright should be normal. It, oh, in I my agree. opinion. Like, it should, like, that shouldn't be the, like, the weird thing, what's normal now is, used to be the weird thing, whatever however I'm trying to say it. Like, now it's like, oh, you look like a peacock, and, and I can't understand a word you're saying. That's actually normal. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I don't know what gender you are. <laughs> that's a whole nother podcast. Uh, yeah. But, but that's, and that's the truth though. So, so part of it, part of it is, is having that respect, um, you know, for authority and authority can be elderly. And it's like what I even, I, I tell my boys all the time, somebody's older than you, you respect them yep. because they're older than you. Now, if they're telling you to do something that you don't agree with, you come talk to me, you say, yes, sir. You come talk to me. But you don't you don't disrespect the default them. You don't is dip. the respect. Yeah, that's and then exactly that right. That person can lose that respect. That's exactly yeah. right. Yep, one hundred percent. 
Um, so I, I just think that that's, that's one of the ways from a discipline standpoint. Now, now we're talking, you know, respect a lot of things that, that are benefits of that, but discipline is a big one that I think a lot of people have lost in life today. And that's where that, that, you know, that, that whole military aspect, I think is a good answer for that. But also who do you, who do you hang around with? Who, who, what's your association that you have around you from a discipline standpoint? Because everybody has pitfalls. I, I mean, we've talked about this. I mean, Kim, you're probably one of the most regimented, disciplined individuals I know. Wilson, I know, I know your level of discipline, you know, and, uh, you know, oh, I know, I know yours as well, but you still need people around you to hold you accountable for what you said you were going to do. Uh, it was cool. One of the guys that, you know, one of, one of our listeners that, uh, that I happened to get my fresh fades from and stuff like that. Uh, I was just in there getting faded up this week, and and he said, "Man, I want to do a marathon." I said, "That's cool, man." He said, "I was talking to another guy about it and stuff, and you know, we we talked back and forth about it a little bit and stuff." And he said, "Hey, man, would it would would it bother you if I maybe ask you to keep me accountable for it?" That is the most mature yeah. mindset of an individual, like that 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 kind of thing right there to ask somebody that that is at another level or whatever it may be to say, Hey man, I need you to hold me accountable. So what I, what I ask you here is, are you at the top of the bottom or you at the bottom of the top? Who are you associating with? Because if you're at the top of the bottom, you probably feel pretty good about yourself, but you ain't going nowhere. Isn't it somewhere between Genesis and Revelations where he talks about if the first are last and last are first? I don't know. Somewhere, it's somewhere, somewhere there. there. It's somewhere within those chapters. <laughs> yeah. But, but the you know, books. like, who's holding you accountable in your life, man? Like, who do you, who do you have around you that's holding you accountable? And I, I don't know if you guys have anything that you can share here that, that would be a, a good. Yeah. I'll, I'd like to share something on that because I, I truly believe that if you are not in counsel with someone that's further along in life, then you're in a dangerous place as a man, you can have a lot of shit figured out, but if you do not, if you're not taking counsel from somebody that has more shit figured out than you or has more years, just more years, honestly, that maybe seen more than you or whatever, you're in a you're in a dangerous spot because you're at some point you're gonna start, especially if you're someone that is disciplined, that is uh focused on personal growth and it has accomplished a lot of things, because at some point you're gonna start reading your own press clippings, you're gonna start thinking you have it all figured out, and you don't have that other person going tapping you on the shoulder going, Hey big shot, you don't know it all. You just don't. And what I believe, and I'm I'm gonna make this statement, and then I'm gonna tell you a story, and I don't want it to come off as sounding arrogant, but what I believe is that what one of the most um, what's the, I don't know where I'm looking for it like it, one of because I'm not trying to sound egotistical but I really don't care you just got to know my heart one of the biggest things you can do as a man is to go to somebody and say I need accountability or I need counsel or I need whatever like I I truly believe that makes you more of a man than than anything um, and and the story is like I've over the last year. I have been in a position where I haven't had as much, much direct mentorship or counsel. Okay. And, and for a lot of years of my life, for over a decade, I had direct people that I'd go to and be like, you know, this is what I'm thinking. You know, what do you think? That, and I always had somebody to bounce stuff off of, or I had somebody to learn from or grow from. Uh, I haven't had that access as much in the last year. Um, but but uh, one of those relationships that I had previous was some was a, uh, my pastor actually who's and I know some people are gonna hear this like oh your pastor is southern preacher guy whatever no like my pastor's mm-hmm. my pastor's a badass dude like yeah. like he's like he's the he's the cool Jesus with the abs that's flipping tables over yeah you know like he's he's the guy you want to hang out with and he knows his stuff right so um I saw him this past week and I was like it was one of the, it was just it's been on my heart for a while when it's like hey listen what day can I buy you lunch or breakfast you know. And, and he was like, what do you mean? I was like, I, I want I want to like, I want us to get back together. Like if we can do something on a monthly basis, whatever. I was like, I, I, and this is flat out what I told him. I said, I'm in a really good spot. I'm in a really good spot in my life. Things are really good. And I know more than ever. I, I said, the one thing I'm missing is I do not have mentorship from somebody. I do not have counsel from somebody. I do not have anybody hold. I have friends holding me accountable, which is good, but I don't have a mentor. And, and I was like, and I need that. And I, this guy is one of the guys I respect more than just about anybody on earth. And so, so I'm seeking that out. So that my point of telling that story is it would be very easy for me to get comfortable where I'm at right now. It'd be very, very easy for me to get comfortable because I got a lot of things figured out and it goes back to what we were talking about previously, because I got a lot of things figured out. It's a trigger for me. It's like, Oh shit, this is dangerous. You're starting to know too much, you know, like you need to, and he's about 
10 to 11 years older than me. He's done some things I haven't. He's done a lot of things I haven't done. Uh, and I just have an, a huge respect for him, like where his mindset is on things and stuff like that. And I know for a fact that I can spend an hour with him and be completely humbled on everything I think I know. Mm. You know, And I want that. And as some people hearing this are going, well, that sounds stupid. I don't want to be humbled like that. Yes, you do. If mm-hmm. you want to accomplish anything great in life, yes, you do. Once again, the disclaimer to this episode is if you are not hungry, we're not right. talking we're to you. We're not talking to you. <laughs> and if you don't want your kids to have a better life than you have, we're not talking to you, mm-hmm. right? It's not about me. It's not about me being great. It's about me knowing what I need to be for my next generation, for my legacy. That's ultimately what it comes down to. If you can take the focus off of yourself and say, um, my kids are going to get to where I'm at based on what I know. But the goal is not for my kids to be where I'm at. The goal is for my kids to kick my ass. And that's why I need somebody kicking my ass, right? He's going to kick my ass. <laughs> he said he's going to kick my ass? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, and, and I think that one of the things that, that, that was difficult for me, especially when we were starting Shepherds of Men, you know, I started looking at it and I started going, you know, that's, that's common knowledge. It makes sense. You know, yeah. what you just said, that's yeah. common. Everybody knows that. But then I started looking into myself and going, what the hell are you? You didn't know that. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like everybody should know. You didn't know that until the right people stepped into your life and started challenging your thinking. And even when you did know it, you didn't always want to go agree with it. You know what I mean? Most like, of the time. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not no, saying I'm you personally. No, 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 any I, of us. No, no, even no. even when it becomes knowledge, you're like you still don't necessarily want to do it because it's not comfortable. Well, it's always about asking the right questions, right? Yeah. Are you asking questions to get the answer you want, right. or are you asking questions to get the answer you need? Right. And that, there's a there's a big difference there, you know. Because you can truly go, I need you to tell me what you see. Yeah. Not what I want to hear. And that hurts. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, it it's hurts, not easy. It, it, it in the words of a great. Um, heavy metal band in the 80s hurt so good come on baby <laughs> that's true that's the Beach Boys right heavy I don't metal think so band, like it sounded like it but I don't think that's who it is <laughs> who is that is that Bon Jovi Look, our, our producer is like disgusted right yeah. now like you can see Sorry. he's just shaking his head it's okay <laughs> well I'm glad that you went that route and I and you know just talking about it you know it's just it definitely is missed in, yep. in the Wilson household having someone that we can you know, bounce those, those all, that just, hey, this is where we're at. This is what we're doing. This is how things are going. What do you think? You know, just having that extra perspective that, uh, especially what you, what I liked, what you said, is someone you respect, someone you look up to, and that has fruit on a tree mm-hmm. that you can go to that can give you solid advice, uh, which is, is, is very important. You can't just go to your neighbor who you have no respect for or don't know. You have to have somebody in your life that you go, hey, I can trust your judgment. Right. John Mellencamp. John, John Mellencamp. Mellencamp. Ah. John, uh, John Cougar Mellencamp. Ooh, Cougar. Cougar. <laughs> Gotta have Cougar in there. All right. So one one of the one of the other aspects. <laughs> it's like seriously. Just, one, one, one of the other aspects that I'm gonna talk about here that has something to do in the studio. <laughs> With what we have control over is your environment, right? We talk about this all the time. As a man, you have control over your environment, uh, or you should. Um, and, and and one of the things, we, we've talked about this previously, don't be a victim of your environment. Be the architect of your environment, right? So um, y- y- your environment around you should support your goals, right? So, uh, you know, for, for and I'll give you an example, and then I want you guys to talk about how you guys are the architects of your environment. So I'm going to put you guys on the spot, but I'm going to give you a quick second to think about it. So I'll use an example and just just because fitness is easy, everybody understands it. Uh, like Wilson was talking about, first step was awareness, right? Like you walk in there, you look at the mirror and you start going, shit, I ain't been to the, the gym. I can tell I'm starting to get a little bit soggy around the midsection, stuff like that. The way you fix your environment is you make it to where you see that every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you go in there, you see the mirror with your body the way that it is. You put your gym bag and your reminders and things of that nature in the way of your normal path every day. Yep. And that's what I mean by legitimately being deliberate about the architecture of your life and what you do. So if your gym bag is hanging by your door and you have to walk by that gym bag every day after looking in the mirror and going, damn, I'm gaining weight and stuff like that, it will cause you to start to make some changes. So you have to be a good architect. Now, ultimately, it's making yourself uncomfortable, the thing that nobody wants to do. You're ulti- you're intentionally making yourself uncomfortable. Like, I put more mirrors up. 
Put the gym. It, it, I'd go past putting the gym bag on the door. I've done this. I put it in the walkway. I put it in the door. Mm-hmm. You know, like or, or whatever it is. I've put things that I will trip over if I it, or I have to step over them. You know, like and that's a that's a small discomfort, but it's a discomfort nonetheless. Like I didn't just have a smooth path to get out. I had to step over something. But like you have to make yourself uncomfortable. You have to, or you're never going to change. You're never going to do shit if you don't make yourself uncomfortable. It's not going to happen. It reminds you of the guy who was motivated. Before the motivation faded. Yeah. When you look at it and you have to step over it, you go, ah, the guy that set that bag right there was motivated. And the good news is you'll get to a position, for those of you that are like, man, that sucks, I don't want to do that every day. Once you go and you're in the gym and you're doing it, for this example, yeah. whatever the thing is, the result, like you said, in the in, it, because it's secular, but it will build on itself. Yeah. You don't have to beat yourself up forever. You no. might need to beat yourself up to get moving. Yeah. But then once you get moving, then it's momentum. Right. And momentum is one of the most powerful things on the planet. Well, and this and and that's why I want uh, and I'll give you a good example. So uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, everybody knows who this guy is. He was he was criticized early on about his legs. The governor. Yeah, the governor. Uh, about his legs whenever he was big in the bodybuilding world, you know, and he was a legend and people still, you know, critiqued him a little bit. But just to just to give you an idea of what it takes to go to a great because the guy, regardless of what you think about him, there's certain things he made bad decisions on. But he did some great things in his life Mm -hmm. came, you know, over uh, as as just basically poor as poor can be and willed himself to, to where he was. But one of the things he talks about is he people criticized his legs. Instead of fighting that and instead of saying, oh, well, you know, I, I, my, my leg, I just don't have the genetics for it, whatever it may be. You know what he did? He wore short shorts all the time to the point where his entire leg was exposed. And he said, I had to look at it all the time. Mm. I had to do something about it. That has to do with awareness. Yep. That, that's, it's one of those things. You have to be aware of your shortcomings. You got to make sure that your shortcomings are in your face because you know that you have to do something about it. So Wilson, what as far as just being an architect of your environment, what's what's the? Well, I mean, limiting distractions with with what I do professionally, I have to me on point every single day, you know, all the time. Um, and there's no, you just there's no t- time off, honestly. Uh, but I put that my myself, myself into that position, so I can't uh, deny that. But the long term play is not to be doing what I'm doing right now. We're in building stage. So in the building stage, I know what I have to do and what sacrifices I have to make. Um, so I know that if if the gym today is not going to fit in, then I'm going to have. I know that it's it is going to fit in later, right? So it all depends on what your perspective is, what you really want to accomplish. And for us, if there's a goal in mind that I have to do, I can't sleep. I, I, it's like that's it. So it's do you a have a goal? Do you have a goal that you have currently right now that you can share how you have become the architect of your environment uh, to be the catalyst for that goal? Like, what have you done physically in your life to make sure that that goal is being? Well, just to be transparent, COVID COVID nineteen did not play well for my family um, due to the starting a business right before it started uh, and having to go through that. So it opened up the eyes of like, okay. I didn't have enough reserves. I didn't have enough in in my bank account to to, to justify uh, a month or two uh, loss. So my goal was to start saving um, aggressively and start paying things off aggressively more so than I've ever had. Uh, because at the beginning of it, I had to create some uh, some loans and some credits and different things of that sort. So the goal is to have all of that squared away by December 1st. But what, or have, December. what have you done from a day to day basis just to remind you, like when you walk out there, when you wake up in the morning, what what has changed about your environment that says this is the way we're headed? I don't care if I feel like it or not. This is what I'm doing. Have you done anything specifically from a physical perspective, like made it where your office is set up a certain way or like I just speak it every single day. So it's yours is more affirmations yes, in the mirror, looking at yourself and speaking, thinking. speaking what I'm wanting yeah. every single day. Uh, it goes into the, my prayer life of like, okay, here's the goal. This is what we're doing. And then also just every single day, every moment, no, there's just, there's not a dull moment. I'm always constantly doing something. Yeah. And uh, it's put in a position where we are going to hit those goals uh, by the first of the year, which no doubt about it. Um, and I'm pretty pumped about it. it and, and it's kind of funny because I never, I honestly, to this point in my life, I've never really actually had a solid savings because I've always had good money. 
Yeah. And and that's where it was kind of like, oh, eye opener, you know. Yeah. Um, the money may not be there, so you need to have preparation. So this is, uh, it's it's changed a lot in, in a good way. Um, and so keeping that in front of your your yourself, I have the goals written out. I've got I've speak it, um, and then just in my environment, I know what I need to do. If it doesn't fall into those goals as of right this moment in my life, I just I don't have time for it. So real quickly, I'll share it. Like one of the things that we've we've wanted to do uh, is start to create a little bit more uh, family life, like home family life spending time together as a family and things of that nature, uh, especially with a, a new one on the way and, and maybe slow down a little bit of the hustle and bustle that we have with life. Um, so what we did was legitimately make our house more comfortable. You know, we, we went out and bought a comfortable big sectional couch to where, we can, sectional too. Yeah, to where we can open up the living room to where now it's conducive to that, where we sit in there. So I have, I have literally looked at it and said, okay, I am the architect of my environment. So how do I make my environment conducive to more family time? Yeah. What do I do to, to create that with my environment? So, uh, you know, I think it's, I think it's awesome. And I think from a discipline standpoint, there's, there's been a lot, you know, that that's come in on this guy. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, but a lot that's, that's come in here and a lot that, that you guys have fed out. But one of the, one of the things just in closing, unless you guys have something that you want to throw in there at the end, uh, I didn't want this one to drag out because ultimately discipline has to do with you taking action, you getting out there and, and doing what the hell you said you were going to do. Get uncomfortable. That'd get, be the only thing I'd mm, like for sure. Take nothing else away from this. Take that you have to get uncomfortable for sure. And, and just just in closing, so so motivation does nothing. I think it's great today. You can go to YouTube and you can watch motivational videos all day long. But ultimately, motivation fades, um, and all that's left is discipline, right? So discipline and habits, right? Discipline creates habits. Habits create success. Um, so you, you guys know that you've listened to our, our podcast, then, then it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but good habits are going to put time on your side, whereas bad habits are going to put time against you. Um, understand that. And it, it is the slight edge effect when it comes to that, because, uh, you know, one of the one of the biggest struggles I think people have is rewards for good habits are often delayed. Um, so you have to be patient. You have to work when the results aren't there. Uh, but rewards for bad habits are often immediate, right? So if, if, if you're trying to lose weight, um, you know, that reward for a bad habit, like eating a potato chip is instant gratification because it tastes so good. So it hits your, your, you know, your, your reward centers and stuff like that. So just make sure that, make sure that you understand that discipline is going to require you to exercise habits that have, have long-term rewards, uh, rather than the short-term rewards. So if you're being instantly gratified, uh, it's a pretty good indicator that you're on the wrong path. So I'm going to leave you with a couple questions, okay? Who's holding you accountable? Who do you have in your life that holds you accountable? And I'm not talking about somebody um, that's just, you know, some Joe Blow or something like that. Cam Cam had a great example. Man, find somebody, get yourself uncomfortable, find somebody, ask them if you can buy them lunch that you respect, and uh, have them hold you accountable. Try to, you know, get regular counseling sessions with those individuals. What does your environment look like? Does your environment, is your environment conducive to, to whatever it is? You know, I know we keep going back to fitness, but it's something that everybody understands. If you're overweight and you're trying to lose weight, do you go in there and your refrigerator is full of Coca-Cola um, and you've got all kinds of stuff that, that is conducive to sitting on your ass? Because uh, if that's the case, you're just fighting an uphill battle. Yep. Change your environment. Remove the Coca-Colas from your refrigerator and replace them with waters. Yep. It's, it's not that difficult. If it's not there, it's not that bad. You know, it's just like taking money and putting it into a savings and paying yourself. If you'll take that 10 or 15% and give it to yourself before you ever see the money, it's not as painful as seeing sure. the money and then having to take that money and put it away. So mm -hmm. be the architect of your environment. Don't be the victim of your environment. And are you aware of where your shortcomings are? If you have goals in your life, where are you short? What, what, what areas do you have to improve? Become aware of that, but be okay with being honest with yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Be aware of where your, your shortcomings are. And do you have desire in your life? Like, are you hungry, man? And if you're not hungry as a man, if you're not hungry, then find something that makes you hungry. That is the whole idea of being a man. You know, every man needs a damsel to save and a dragon to slay, man. Like, and if you don't have that, no wonder you're upset. You know, no wonder you're not happy. <clears throat> True that. It's it's going to take action, guys. If, if you don't have desire and you're not hungry and you don't have awareness of where you're at, then you can't expect to take action, okay? But if you do... 
take action on that stuff and celebrate your W's, I promise you, you'll be in a better place. Just be patient, put the work in, act like, work like it's up to you and leave the results up to God and everything will work out well. Appreciate you guys tuning in, uh, man. Jump on our YouTube channel. I'm gonna give you three seconds right now <laughs> <laughs> as we it's start to do. Um, like it, subscribe, hit the alarm button, uh, follow us on social media. You know, reach out to us, man. I'll tell you what. If you need accountability, buddy, if you don't have somebody right now, and in the short term you need somebody, reach out to us, man. Hit the Shepherds of Men up. Send us an email. You could shoot us, uh, you know, a message on on social media and just say, "Hey, man, I'd like somebody to be accountable." We've already had a couple people do that uh, for for reading and and fitness goals and things of that nature. You know what? I, to me personally, that's an honor. If somebody reaches out to me and asks me that, that's an honor to me. So don't ever feel embarrassed to do that. Uh, you know, take take the humble yourself for a minute to do that kind of stuff, um, and we'd be more than happy. Uh, to help in that area uh, if we can. If you have questions on any of this stuff that we're talking about too, man, feel free to shoot us questions. If you disagree with what we say, uh, you know, feel free to shoot a shoot a message to us and stuff. Just make sure that you you like and subscribe to everything that we have, guys, because ultimately this is going to be huge, but it's going to take a lot of men, uh, you know, stepping up to make it as big as what this is intended to be. So with all that being said, man, you guys go out there and attack life. Don't let it attack you. You've been part of the movement.